about control and coordination in plants. Each organism identifies the changes occurring around it and responds based on these changes. The identification of changes by the organism in the environment around it so that it can give some reaction is termed as stimulus. The reaction given to the stimulus is called the response. In order to give the response, the organism performs various movements. Some movements cause a change in position of organism. If an organism changes its position during a movement, then such movement is called locomotion. In order to give a response for a stimulus, there is a need for control over the movements. In addition to this, it is also necessary for various organs to work together. We call it coordination. Let's talk about control and coordination in this video. Plants can't change the place as that of animals. However, perform various movements in order to give a response. If we touch the mimosa plant, then the leaves of plant begin to fold up and droop. This kind of movement has no relation with growth. If the movement performed to give response does not involve growth, then such kind of movement is called growth independent movement. Let's understand the growth independent movement in the mimosa plant. The cells of the leaves of mimosa plant are filled with water. The shape of cells is maintained by the water pressure. Due to this, the leaves remain open. When the plant detects touch, it releases certain chemicals like potassium and chloride ions. Increased ion concentration outside the cell reduces the difference between the concentration of ions within the cell and outside the cells. Water gets transported to the outside of the cell through the process of osmosis. This causes contraction of cells and so leaves get closed. Even if we touch the plant at any part, but still, the response is given by other parts as well. For this information of touch is transported to other parts of the plant by the electrochemical means. Because of this, the leaves get closed. The movement of closing the leaves in the mimosa plant is termed as seismonastic movement, which is the growing independent movement. Similar movements are blooming of lotus during the morning, catching of insect by Venus flytrap, when the insect touches the plant, etc. Movement dependent on growth In some plants, such as grapes plants, tendrils are sensitive to touch. When a part of the tendril comes into contact with the base, then, the part of the tendril in touch with the base grows slowly while the part which is away from the tendril grows faster. As a result of this, tendril circles around the base and climbs over it. The response has a direct relation with growth. Such movement is called growth-dependent movement. Here, the plant grows in one direction in response to the stimulus. If the plant grows in the certain direction in response to the stimulus, then such movement is called tropism. Various environmental factors act as stimuli to the plants. Let's discuss about it. Light is a stimulus for plants. Shoot of the plants gives a response to the light by growing towards it. However, the roots of the plant grow away from the light. The response of a plant for the stimulus of light is called phototropism. 
If any part of the plant grows towards light, then we call it a positive phototropism. And if any part of the plant grows away from the light, then we call it as negative phototropism. We know that roots of the plant always grow downward and shoot always grow upward. The downward movement of the roots and the upward movement of the shoot shows a response to the stimulus of gravitation. The response given to the stimulus of gravitation is called geotropism. Growth of roots downward in the soil is positive geotropism while the growth of shoot upward and away from the soil is negative geotropism. Similarly, roots of the plant grow towards water. The response given by the plant to the stimulus of water is called hydrotropism. Plants also give a response to the stimulus of chemicals. For example, when pollen grains reaches the stigma, there is a development of a pollen tube to take pollen grain towards ovule. Such a moment is called chemotropism. We will talk about it in the upcoming videos. Plants respond to various environmental stimuli. For giving the response, stimulated cells release various hormones depending on the stimulus. For example, plant detect the stimulus of light. Because of that, shoot produces hormone auxin. Hormone is a carbonic compound that is produced in small concentration. They are used to transfer the information to various parts of the organism. The hormone produced by the plant is called phytohormone. The place of synthesis of the hormone and the action of the hormone is often different. For this, the hormone reaches the functional area through the diffusion process. Auxin causes increase in the length of cells. However, when light comes from one direction, then auxin diffuses from the tip of the plant towards the part of the plant away from the light. Due to this, the concentration of auxin increases in that part. Therefore, there is a greater increase in the length of cells in that part, which causes the plant to turn towards the light. In the same way, the hormone gibberellin causes growth of the shoot of the plant. Hormone cytokinin stimulate the division of the cells. Therefore, the concentration of cytokinin is higher in plant parts like fruits and seeds. Auxin, gibberellins, and cytokinin help the plant to grow. However, hormone abscisic acid inhibits the growth of the plant or plant part. For example, abscisic acid causes the leaves to turn yellow from green that results in the wilting of the leaves. Hormone ethylene which is a gaseous hormone, causes the ripening of the fruits. In the same way, various plant hormones helps the plant to grow, develop and to control and coordinate various environmental stimuli. So today we have learned control and coordination in plants. plants, plants, plants.